right now. Okay, so f is equal to Godunov of ui plus, I'm just going to copy and paste, ui plus half left, ui plus half right. I'm going to code up the Godunov scheme over here. UL and UR. Okay. So, just to review our good enough scheme. So, the flux is going to be taking either maximum or minimum depending on which UL or UR is larger. Right. So, so let me just... Uh, so, so when, when we are taking maximum or minimum for Burgers flux, Burgers, it can only be taking three possible values. It can either FL is equal to UL square over two, F right is equal to UR square over two, or F mean is equal to zero. Right, so so because when we are taking the maximum and the minimum of the flux over a range of u values, and the minimum or maximum depending on which side of u is going to be larger, and because the Burgers flux is u square over two, it's a convex function, and because it's a convex function, when whenever we are taking the maximum, the maximum can can only be possible on one of the ends. It's either F left or F right. Right, so, so Burgers, the flux is like this, F as a function of U. So whenever we have a range of U, taking the maximum over the range can either occur on this side or this side. Well, Taking the minimum can have possible can can be different. So if I'm taking the minimum over a monotonically increasing or decreasing region, it is taking the minimum the minimum occurs on one side. But if the range of u overlaps with u equal to zero, then the minimum actually happens to be zero. That's why I'm rating f min is equal to zero here. So several cases. So first, if uh, so let me just uh, say f is equal to uh, zeros length of ul. One. Okay, uh, length of ul one. So I'm making a a function of this length. So f over the region of y y ul is greater than ur. So when U left is greater than U R. Should we take the minimum or maximum? <coughs> U L greater than U R. We should be taking the maximum, right? So it is equal to when when we have a maximum, it doesn't matter. Uh, is it max or maximum in MATLAB? Max. max. Okay. Is F L and F R. All right. So so this makes sense because when both are positive, uh, when both are positive, so, so okay. So over over this region, over this region. Uh, so if if I have uh, u left, u r, I have a shock wave like that. And the flux should be taking on the left, which is UL, and it's the maximum. Okay, that's good. Okay, so F of UL less or equal to UR is going to be equal to uh, the minimum of FL and FR. And F of UL less or equal to uh, zero and uh ul and the zero less or equal to ur should be equal to f min so these are the three cases 
right so this is the case when ul is less than ur which means we should be taking the minimum and that ul and ur overlaps with the region of zero and by taking the minimum we are not taking one side we are taking the minimum inside that range which is zero so this is the burgers good enough scheme okay so let's try it uh, i'm sure i still have box somewhere but let's do it anyway so let's make a uh, okay x interface uh, let's still use what we had in the last lecture x would be equal to the cell averages and u is equal to sine of uh, x times 2 pi so x and u is still the same as what we have in the last lecture so that's good let's make u0 equal to u again and let's use the ddt uh, we call it burgers we solve it for this much okay so starting debugging error in this oh a and b must be the same so it's actually the maximum of this within that range so it's max of this and mean of this and here should be the same it should be fl of this and fr of that all right let's try again uh returns a vector of length 101 oh i see okay so here uh we actually computed i plus half so we shouldn't have this anymore right so because uh, uh we only need uh, i goes when so for i plus half we need i goes from minus one to n do this again we have a solution so let's look at it plot x u right so that way we so you see uh, something different from what we got in the last lecture right so we no longer on the same grid we no longer see the minimum of this decaying as the wave propagates towards the right so that's the good thing about a second order accurate scheme that is when we have the wave going we no longer when in smooth regions we no longer have that much dissipation error the maximum of the solution no longer seems to uh, decrease over time we no longer see this weird gap over here and uh, just to remind you what we have before the easiest case is to set phi is equal to zero so that's our uh, our first order scheme and plot this again uh, what we have is this curious gap over here that it decreases the maximum of the solution and increase the minimum of the solution and by by having a proper uh, having a proper limiter we no longer have that all right so so previously we have a case that violates so so if we set phi equal to zero we violate the condition that uh, phi phi has to be we violate the condition that in this page i think yeah phi has to be uh greater than this black line so so for example if we try another if we try like your proposal what's your name again uh, Mike. if i try mike's proposal which violates the second condition that is uh uh da, 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 da. that is instead of setting phi to this we set phi of everything is equal to one except for in the region of r less than zero right basically we are violating i think we are violating the uh the the monotonicity of total variation condition it's still going to be second order but if we look at the solution here it looks good but like if you see matlab is a uh it's a smart thing whenever you have the solution exceed the one and minus one it rescales the screen so that like it looks like you have uh 
let's let's zoom in to actually see this so you see that the solution has peaks now that exceeds the, the value one so it is not monotonically decreasing the total variation all right but the solution is still second order accurate so so the proposal is not too bad and uh, over over this region it actually damps down the shock wave and doesn't it doesn't create wild oscillations as in the previous case which is basically when you set so so our previous case our 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 um, our central flux is is actually even worse than setting phi is equal to one everywhere because it's actually using information from the wrong side. Okay, so so this lecture we discussed uh, uh, how to solve scalar conservation loss um, uh, in one dimension, but like now we have going to second order schemes. Okay, so this finishes our discussion on solving scalar conservation loss on one-dimensional domain. And in the rest of final volume, we are going to say, we're going to see how do we extend this type of techniques to more than one dimensions. And it turns out extending this to more than one dimensions is very straightforward, even for very complex unstructured mesh.